Hello everybody, welcome back to the Hearthstone Champions League. We are jumping into the final match of the day. The decider match for Group D. One of these players will move on to the playoffs. One of these players will be eliminated from the tournament. Cypher versus Stan Sifka. I'm TJ, joined by Proto Hype. Have you been enjoying yourself today, Proto Hype? You know, I'm having just as much fun, if not more, than I did last week. Uh, Whoa! Well, last week was my was my first cast, so I was a bit nervous. Um, didn't really have a benchmark for what I should be doing, what I what I shouldn't be doing, what have you. But uh, definitely learning a lot and uh, enjoying casting with you, uh, all of these games and these great players. Yeah. And uh, definitely enjoying uh, seeing some some old school shaman throwback. Old school shaman throwback. It hasn't been that successful today, but <laughs> you know, every dog has its day. We'll see if you can find a win here, Stensifka. Uh, is the druid player. Their class icons are backwards, so ignore those, but uh, Sansifka is the druid, I promise you. And uh, someone heard me, so they're changing it. <laughs> and uh, this is actually the first time we've seen uh, confirmation that Cypher is running Doomhammer. We, we knew that he was running some sort of combo oriented out, and uh, it seemed a bit, a bit overzealous to assume that he would be playing Alakir or perhaps played Alakir in a deck that uh, really is running so much overload and so much mana consumption. Yeah. Um, it, it's just too heavy, honestly. Uh, probably not good enough anymore. Um, maybe once upon a time when creature quality was uh, at it, not at a premium, <laughs> per se. But uh, yeah, definitely on the Doomhammer plan. Uh, two copies of Rockbiter, two copies of Earthshock, two copies of Crackle, and uh, lots of damage coming out from, uh, from Cypher's Shaman. Yeah. And it's really interesting to see that Cypher thought in this type of meta that mid-range Shaman would have a place. That's and it, it's kind of cool to see that he thought that because out of all the decks in the game, he was able to choose three for this tournament. And one of them was mid-range Shaman. Yeah, not something that uh, I think most players would agree with, but uh, something that's been pretty successful for him today not uh not the seamless and all-powerful showing that maybe he had hoped but uh, <laughs> definitely some definitely some powerful cards uh, yeah and powerful <laughs> powerful statted minions that maybe people are, are underutilizing at the moment yeah for sure and he did find a win earlier with the shaman deck because he has one and one so far so See if that he can do that. He's staring at a pretty strong board right now, and he, he his hand is chock full of just powerful stuff. And he does have fire elemental, so that's going to be able to contest this the first iteration of this paladin shredder. We'll see what's going to come out. It's a mad bomber. Ooh, Emperor Thorsan. A solid pickup from from Stan Sifka, despite not having any. Uh... Any removal spells in his hand for the the following turn, um, he will be able to use that uh, Thorsan to protect the rest of his board. As uh, Thorsan, as we know, definitely has taunt. Um, it uh, is something that Cipher will need to answer on this turn with the perhaps with the fire elemental. Doesn't appear that he has any other way to deal with it. But uh, uh, yeah, a, actually a really solid hand for for Sifka at the moment, and he does have the lead going into to turn six on board against Shaman, which is a position that Druid always wants to be in. Yeah, and he's got BGH for the Doctor Boom, so that's a sick position to be in also. He can Big Game Hunter plus low at them this turn if he wants to. He can even Wild Growth, which, I mean, you can save that for the top, for later in the game to draw the extra card with the excess mana, but uh, the game's not going to last that much longer, especially if you're going with an aggressive line like that. So you might as well just give yourself the extra mana to work with. Uh, and, to maybe draw with Ancient of War next turn. I don't see any reason not to use it. So he's going to push the damage. Put Cypher down to 16. Yeah, these boom bots really not going to get the job done, I don't think, as as far as uh, what Cypher wants them to be doing. But uh, Stan Sifka deliberating on the play that you just mentioned. Uh, Whoa. He wants to get up to uh, comparable combo level. But he does end up saving it because he will be able to combo next turn regardless. So that's uh, an interesting hold. But if he, does, if he does get too far behind, the uh, thing is, is uh, if he wild grows now, Ancient of War would give him a draw for Savage War for potential lethal. Mm, um, that's a good point. So, 
a little bit surprised that he values the extra card, but it might not even matter because it looks like he's just going to have enough damage next turn to win anyway. Because sure. there's no way for Cypher Ooh. to clear with what he has on the board. Right. Uh, is that a? But Lothab will block it at least for one more turn. Yeah, and that will allow for a a turn of downtime per se for Stan Sifka to be able to dig himself into an out, but he does hit it off the top on this particular turn. It's one so, off though. So is he really with the yeah. draw that'd be six on the nine? Wow, yeah, he is. He just cannot hear a power. Unfortunate. Um but at the same time, with the combo coming down for sure next turn, uh he may just opt to to keep her, but it looks like he wants to just get some uh get some good draws in. That cat is massive. Is that even a cat? What is that? All I see is fluff. I, I, I think that was just a huge cat. It, oh my. It, oh, oh my indeed. <laughs> oh bother. I was like, oh, that's just a... Whoa, God. It's either an 80-pound skunk or it's a huge cat. <laughs> it's a giant gorilla dog thing. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, a special breed of dog in the UK that looks like a cat. It's a snake in my boot. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a cat called a a Maine Coon. It's a very for I'm sorry, what? It's it's called a Maine a Maine Coon. Maine, Maine for, Coon. for 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 cat lovers. Okay. Uh they're going to be like, "Why is he saying it like that? It's a, it's a pretty popular form of cat." I know, like uh, cats, but, but it's actually it's it's a really fluffy cat that's actually just massive. Really? Yeah, and Big bones, maybe? Yeah, they they're really huge. Like you know the pictures on the internet that you see of like people like holding these giant cats, these mm -hmm. giant house cats. Those are usually Maine Coons. Fun fact for for you, um, as there's not much analysis to be done for the rest of this game because since Sifka <laughs> is gonna take it pretty handily with combo, and he's actually just gonna take a quick moment to look at his notes before he does this. Using his, uh, his time efficiently. I like it. Yeah. Expect and nothing less. Yeah, Cypher goes ahead and concedes. Just force of nature is all he needs to find a win. So Santifka gets his druid out of the way and chalk up another loss to the Shaman. It's one and two so far today. I'm keeping track of the stats. <laughs> I'll bet you are. <laughs> yeah, I am. We'll see by the end of this what what it's what it's gonna put out for us. So uh, Sansipka does have the hunter remaining, and he does have his own control warrior remaining as his two last decks. Yes, he does, and we uh, we do know that Sansipka is playing a more a more aggressively aggressively built version of that of that warrior with pile of shredders. Definitely something that uh, is suited to handling druid, uh, if any warrior deck is. Probably a, a step down from Patron, but uh, still, still solid nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, picking up two weapons and uh, and some decent minions against uh, Cypher's Druid and Fireworks definitely something you want against the potential uh, Tarnassus Aspirin on too. So I, I think Cypher's plan with his lineup was to to target Control Warrior in a sense because he's got mid range Druid, he has Shaman. Which, maybe not so much anymore, but classically, a high threat shaman, it does pretty well against control warrior. And he also has his own control warrior that's built very minion heavy, and it seems like it, it's a deck that's built to be good in the mirror matchup. Sure, that's an interesting so, point. That might have been his plan coming in, because otherwise his, his deck choices don't really have too much rhythm. Right. Yeah, definitely something that I could see uh, when you put it that way. And... Uh... Perhaps, uh, perhaps he just wanted to play shaman. You know, sometimes we have we have urges. <laughs> yeah, know, so. there's people out there that just love shaman, and sure enough, they just want to play it as much as they can. Shaman is one of the. I only have two classes that aren't golden, and it's priest and shaman. That is utter blasphemy. <laughs> How could you not have golden? Shaman? Well, there, there was times in the meta where priest and shaman were good. Like shaman was considered pretty strong once upon a time, and priest. Like right around the time of Nax Ramus, uh, they had the Death Rattle Priest that like a lot of people were playing. Even recently, Dragon Priest was popular. But I used to actually be an only Control Warrior player for the I first see that. for the first four months or so that I played Hearth constructed Hearthstone. I played only Control Warrior. 
We definitely walked uh, different paths. I was uh, I was that dirty zoo player that everyone disliked. The then, dirty zoo player. Yeah, that's all I could afford. I was like, wow, what's this deck that this like this man has created? The Ray Noodle, <laughs> the, man, the man, the myth, the legend. And, yeah, uh, zoo was pretty solid back then. Some people don't know, but Proto Hype actually was in the 2014 regional championship for uh, the Americas uh, for BlizzCon for Hearthstone. Yeah, it's with your beanie. <laughs> it's uh, it's a trademark at this point. He was beanie guy. I have to wear it. You know, people are like, who's this guy with the beanie? That's proto hype. <laughs> There's a lot of people having the re- revelation right now. They're like, the beanie guy. <laughs> oh, that right. was him. <laughs> yeah. That all makes sense. Mm-hmm. Well, sorry for us to decide between innovate ancient of floor. Or going with the Drew to the Claw and decides to start applying the pressure. Hmm. With the uh, the Force of Nature already in hand, I can definitely get behind that. She's using that Force 6 to protect your, uh, your mm-hmm. Pyromancer. Perhaps get uh, some Ancient Lore pressure down in the coming turns. Yeah. Also, but... if he if he had decided to go with the Innovate Ancient Lore, he would have damaged his Wild Pyromancer. True enough, and we would never want to do that. In any <laughs> no. Nope. He's running a whirlwind. They're gonna get heavily punished. So Sifka gonna be able to clear up this board rather easily. Uh, he will have the option to just a car on the following turn if he would like to. Uh, usually a play that you want to be making uh, as early as possible, given the given the window to play it. And uh, he will have an onboard answer to this Thorson, so I, I suspect we we may see that. But if the board is clear. He may go ahead and take that as a cue to drop Thorson on uh, on Cypher. But there's going to be a one-turn window where Stensifka will be at 14 health if he doesn't pick up removal. True. So True. he might play Sludge Belcher next turn mm, to protect himself against that. Because let's say Emperor Thorson's played here. If he doesn't pick up a removal, he has to hit the ship's cannon in and right, use right. the weapon, which would put him down to 14. So... It puts him in an awkward spot where he really wants to play down those big six drops, but uh, can he afford to put himself vulnerable to Force of Nature Savage Roar? Wow, he just doesn't care. Oh, he's going to think about it. (laughs) He's like, oh no. (laughs) Oh, oh, God, no. Where's my banana? Cost reduction. Yeah. I need potassium! <laughs> Martha! <laughs> uh, perhaps, a, perhaps a Belcher coin here, probably, like you said. Uh, mm, wow, both players really uh, really utilizing the, the hand-on-face gestures. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a stressful turn for, for both of us. I just like the Belcher. The next turn, you get just a card coin armor. Sure. Um, to get value of that immediately. He's, hmm. he's thinking, how likely is it that he has combo this early game? Okay, doesn't risk it. Plays the Belcher. I like it. Great spot. Yeah, I think that's smart uh, because you can definitely confuse uh, the way he's played the the BGH and the Innervate. Uh, we know he has a force, but I think it's it's pretty easy to uh, to have combo on that turn, and I think Sifka definitely came to that conclusion. Yeah, it's, it's whether or not he got the reduction for both pieces since he's been on turn 7, or even exactly. just have it innervate and draw into one of the pieces. Yeah. So um, it, playing itself safe is probably the good thing to do, especially since he does have stabilization tools. And, yeah. So, okay, this turn I could see him Emperor Thorsan coin armor, because then next turn with the reduction of the Justicar True Heart, uh, even without the reduction, he'd still be able to play just a car and armor up. So I like this decision. Definitely. And Stansifka does have the, the shield slam to clean up this lore. Uh, let's swing into his Belcher, uh, if it is. Um, Cypher does have the ability to take a more aggressive line, uh, perhaps with Rag or uh, Keeper. A Rag definitely hitting a solid target Ooh. in either capacity, getting rid of a taunt or uh, or the Thorson, or just doing a bunch of damage to his face. And then he has a, a silence on deck to perhaps push lethal through. But uh, Sylvanas also a really powerful card on a, uh, a dual creature board. So a lot of a lot of options for for Cipher to mull over. I like the silence and then innervate keeper and just push face damage. I must save hmm. Or innervate Sylvanas. Innervate Sylvanas, yeah. Hmm. Or perhaps a uh, low have to defend the brawl or something like that. I don't think he worried uh, too much about the brawl with Sylvanas on the board. 
Right, right. Because that's a lot of mana that he would have to spend and to have a creature taken. <laughs> yeah. yeah, to have a creature so. taken. So since Sipka's in a really awkward spot now, because this board is so tough to deal with, he can yep. sacrifice the Belcher into the Ancient of War. Killed the Sylvanas with his Emperor Thoris and just got True Heart armor up and shield slam the the remain remainder of the Ancient of Lore. He goes up to fifteen, leaves two damage on board. He's dead to combo regardless. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and and Rag, uh, <laughs> even if he's not dead to combo, Rag pre uh, presenting a really unique challenge for for Sifka to overcome. And honestly, having to kill Rag and uh, heal enough in one turn to not die to combo anyway, or even even like individual combo pieces uh, like Force of Nature will be quite the challenge and probably something his hand isn't currently up to. See what the plan is, he's running out of time, so he's gotta go. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go right there. That wasn't the play that I was expecting. I can't say that I would have called that, but I suspect that they're having a uh, an internet issue as Stan Sifka's camera uh, appeared to be lagging out right as he was taking the end of that turn. Uh, he appears to be talking to someone on Skype. Yeah, they're they're uh, talking it over now. Uh, sure, sure. The first thing Stan Sifka said was, I lagged, did you have combo? And because he, he since Sivka realizes he would have died anyway um, to combo, so uh, yeah. I, I think that's just going to be the ruling that okay, yeah, that's... Uh, no remake game because uh, since Sivka would have died 100% no matter what to what was uh, presented to him that turn. So uh, with that, Cipher is going to tie the series up one to one. Pretty good stuff. Yeah, an unfortunate uh, well series of events there at the end of the game but uh, a comparable solution was reached and mm -hmm. uh yeah well played to uh well played to cypher and this druid <laughs> druid has been uh, really a house for everyone today mm -hmm. yeah well every single player today brought warrior and druid as two of their decks and every single player brought a different fourth deck so um just it's sort of just a nod to the middle right now. Druid is so strong. There's multiple archetypes. Warrior is also considered one of the strongest decks, especially in constructed, because it deals with a lot of these, uh, a lot of the decks so well. It's got consistent matchups against so many things. Indeed. And uh, Sansifka, it, he, both of these players made bold choices in their third decks. A lot of times we see uh, Paladin lately as a third deck. Sansifka went with Hunter, and Cypher went with Shaman. So. Interesting choices. Hunter, maybe not so much, but Shaman definitely surprised us. Yeah, it's... Uh, I can't say that I would ever rather play Shaman uh, where Muster for Battle is a thing in Paladin. Uh, cards like Minibot and even uh, even Shredder. Or just lists like all the class cards. Yeah, it just lists all of them, man. It's, yeah. uh, it, gets really, it gets really problematic. Uh, <laughs> Paladin has, has sweet late game as well. It's... Uh, I don't know. I, yeah, I suspect I wanna... that you know, this is more of a, a test run for for Cipher Shaman. Than... Yeah, I wouldn't want to play Shaman knowing that other classes exist. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> it's basically what it comes down <laughs> to. Uh, wow. So Cipher actually gets the best possible totem for facing off against a turn one leper gnome. This is one of those situations where shamans are great. One ones are are really good against yeah. two ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tuscar Totemic, let's see what that'll bring. A Stone Claw, not the best. But it'll at least block some damage and buy some time. Sansifka with Animal Companion. Liak. Doesn't do anything this turn. Liak on a two creature board is always something you want to be seeing, uh, especially in the early game here. Mm -hmm. And Shaman, that, that 2 4 body plus the. Uh, the damage buffs that you're getting are uh, pretty hard to deal with. And yeah, eating a uh, eating a hex or not having it dealt with at all on in one turn is really solid. But a, a seven attack uh, fire card destroyer coming out. But unfortunately, Stan Sifka does have a uh, the the solution 
uh, multiple to, solutions either hunter's mark or freezing trap freezing trap it hurts so much with a fire guard destroyer because you just you stuck. overloaded yeah man that overload tricky guy overload one is uh surprisingly surprisingly annoying <laughs> it yeah. may seem sort of innocuous but it's a it's a problem <laughs> Oh, just Overload 1? I'd oh. argue that Overload 2 is even more annoying. Really? I think... Uh, Potentially even Overload 3. I think Earth Elemental would uh, yeah. take the cake for most annoying Shaman card. <laughs> you forgot about the... What is, I don't even know what the card's called. <laughs> elemental Overload? Oh, yeah. Elemental Destruction. Yeah, elemental like... Destruction, yeah. I called it Elemental Overload. <laughs> because it just that's, that's overloads you that's so much. Right. And since this guy actually decides to forego the freezing trap move mm. and opt to go for this uh, play instead, a little bit interesting to see that. It, it, yeah. it felt like it lined up so nicely with freezing trap. He had knife juggler to fill the rest of his mana with. Yeah, he could and, have also uh, you know, just filled out his hero power since he did have a really solid board already. And knife juggler yeah. kind of playing into uh, to lightning storm a little bit more than he would like. And I, although I don't think we've seen a lightning storm from Cypher, so he may have. May have dropped uh, those cards for for some extra spot removal, but yeah, I I think that's probably the best target you're ever going to see for a freezing trap. Yeah. Actually, I think yeah, it really feels like it is because you can't get much better than overload and a target that doesn't really have a battle cry. I mean, it does have a battle cry, but it doesn't have a board impacting battle cry. Right. Um. So, uh, hex is going to be used here in Earthshock to clean up the board, but that is a battle toad. <laughs> oh no and now he's got double freezing traps so uh, punished <laughs> by not playing any first thought we were just gonna leave it at punished I was like savage <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> overkill and he holds on to knife juggler so really uh, realizing that he's running out of resources gotta start weaving in these hero powers also uh, shamans tend to fill the board pretty quickly with small stuff so if he draws into a Unleash the Hounds, Snipe Juggler is great in combination with that. <laughs> Unleash the Hounds. <laughs> Unleash those Hounds. <laughs> Unleash the Hounds is Nav Overload. That's for dang that's, sure. That's a fact. <laughs> oh, look at that off the top with a Hex already used and a Freezing Trap up. We take does, it, those. does it get any better? The only thing is that it's now BGHable. That is a fact. Yeah, it is. <laughs> completely subjective it's whether or not that <laughs> high main is bghable yes is that orange juice it just looks like almond milk i can't i can't shake it it's, it's banana juice it's ban <laughs> i don't know but straight out of the cart and such a baller move i'm not yeah, especially one of those the slanted ones at the top where you have to yeah. tilt it at like a 45 degree yeah, angle yeah. to get it in your mouth <laughs> like, it seems what? like it, it's tougher to do that like, it's like oh it's a it's the lazy move uh to drink it out of the car and i think it's more of a challenge to drink it out of the car and then just pour it in a glass i'm way too beta for that but sansifka is going to take a two to one lead in the series taking a pretty quick win with the hunter cypher didn't look too happy about seeing that high main on turn six and realizes that there's not really going to be a way for him to come back Sensifka yeah, just has Warrior remaining? I believe so. And I, I suspect that Cypher is regretting his uh, his Warrior back to, uh, to Shaman a, a bit after after his results in this tournament. Currently 1-3. and three. He's gung-ho about it, though. Throwing it out again. Yeah, 1-3 one, one so far. And uh, the game that he did win was off of a max roll crackle. Yes, so or, or that was the only lethal on board, I believe, aside yeah. from uh, insane boombots. So. Yeah, insane boombot RNG. So uh, that was a pretty fun one to watch. Uh, getting stuck with a Doctor Boom in his opening hand is not that great, and a Doom Hammer. And Cipher bound and determined to get this uh, the Shaman back to a fifty percent win rate. It's impossible. The best, <laughs> it literally, is impossible. <laughs> the best the Shaman can finish is a two and three record. Um, the deck that I've been pressing the most so far by today was Densipka's Hunter. Uh, it won all three matches in its in its first first match, first try. So three and zero for that Hunter deck. Yeah, he did have uh, did 
had quite the quite the opening starts for. <laughs> Hi, Hyman on turn six, all three games. And uh, a second one and two of them, I think. Yeah, so pretty, yeah, pretty solid. But, he uh, won the first game before he even could have a chance to draw the second one in that last <laughs> one. So true, true. Um, Stancifka has a really nice way to deal with this board. He's not too upset about seeing that spell power totem because it could be a totem golem. <laughs> yes, it could be. I actually can Earth Shock Flame Tone here to clear this off if you want. You can also hex, but it's a control warrior. There's a lot of hex targets. Yeah, probably mm -hmm. one of the uh, the lesser hex targets in Stancifka's list. <laughs> There's the Justicar. car. Finds it early again. So this has been a pretty good card for Stan Sifka today. Hasn't really been able to utilize it to its fullest in a couple of the matchups, but Shaman tends to be a little bit more grindy as the game progresses. It's one of the reasons why in the past they were considered good against Warrior because it was hard for Warrior to remove the totems, but now with Justicar Car True Heart, more ways to gain him armor, they just might find themselves out of reach of the shaman yeah it's definitely um especially now that warriors are playing cards like uh, slam and bash just a lot of ways to deal with uh some of the smaller answers that may have been more problematic in the past like feral yeah. spirit definitely a card that was a house against shaman for a while um before before death spite was uh <laughs> yeah so, so adequately uh engaged in max <laughs> What a series of draws and plays for Stinsifka there. And I'm actually surprised that Cypher didn't decide to develop the Doomhammer last turn. Because uh, uh, either way, whatever play he made, he was overloading too much for Fire Elemental to be played this turn. Sure. So, uh, you know, he might as well take a chance. He could have been afraid of Harrison, but I don't think we've seen Stinsifka run Harrison. And he could have just held on to the attack, not used those two charges to sort of make it awkward for Stan Sifka. if he harrisons it then he discards three cards so yeah that's an interesting point if you're not using it then like when really are you using it because it's pretty unlikely that you're getting him to a uh a life total that would be uh in combo range uh, nowadays especially with just a card bash and yeah and it's, it's just a very difficult uh, play to make when you know you don't have that 16 damage off of doom hammer to get you there yeah Just a card, True Heart. Pretty good. Doesn't have a way to deal with the Fire Elemental this turn, but he could be pretty confident that it is just going to be traded into. Uh, going into turn 7, Dr. Boom is going to be played, most likely, but San Stansifka does have a BGH to follow that up. And if you look at Cypher's hand after that turn, he's got Doom Hammer and Double Hex. Yeah, what nothing, do you do? Nothing really going. <laughs> what are those? <laughs> nothing really going for Cipher in this game. Um, he does. <laughs> Stan Sifka has answers on answers. Uh, answers for stuff that Cipher hasn't even drawn yet. So as soon as he hits a uh, a relevant threat, uh, I suspect uh, <laughs> we'll see uh, Cipher start uh, playing on the defensive here. Mm -hmm. He does have those two hexes. Yeah. Well, now he plays the Doom Hammer. Is he going to take twelve? Holy moly, he's going in. You gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. Yeah, I guess he figures he's trying to make this Fire Elemental go a little bit further. Uh, because he realized that Stansifka didn't have removal for it last turn. And Stansifka, I'd assume he'd use Execute, because if he uses this to get a BGH out, then wow, he's going to get punished by the Dr. Boom! That seems a little reckless. I would have to agree. Uh, I think you definitely use the Execute there, especially since you have the, the Justicar Hero Power online for your Shield Slam, uh, along with Bash and the weapon, and a Brawl for that matter. I, I really don't see a reason uh, not to just Execute there. Yeah, the argument could be that BGH is not as flexible. Uh, BGH, there's a chance that you may not be able to use that as removal for the rest of the game, whereas Execute, you can use it pretty much at any time as long as you have damage to deal. Sure. So, you know, that's an argument for it, and we have all the information, so it's hard to say, but it, it feels like the only way that you lose from this stage from Sansif in Sansifka's spot is if you uh, use your removal a little bit too recklessly and run into something like a Ragnaros or a Dr. Boom, which is definitely possible. And 
We'll see. Yeah, especially if... especially being thrown into the Doom Hammer so early. Um, maybe maybe would have liked to see that BGH forced on the table when Cypher had a few less charges. But I think regardless, it would have died to the Doom Hammer. So that's it's probably less of an argument. But I think yeah. uh, Execute was definitely uh, a bit more flexible in that position. Maybe something that he might take back if given the chance. But we'll see. Also brawl. <laughs> also brawl. <laughs> he realized that if Doctor Boom's played, he does have brawl to go with it. So. Uh, maybe this was his plan all along. He expected the Doctor Boom and forced Cipher to, you know, play into it. And sure. uh, right now, I think both players are sort of in the similar positions. Cipher actually has taken a lot of damage, though, which is the only thing. Since if it doesn't have a way to close out the game yet, but definitely could pick up some things over the next couple turns to do just exa exactly that. Yeah, and he does have the ability to uh, just hear a power up and. Uh, shield send that totem golem if he wants to. He does still have the bash paired up with the execute. Maybe not the most efficient answer, but he did have a, a backup plan when not using uh, that execute. So uh, definitely something to keep in mind. And yeah, Stan Sipka definitely, uh, he is playing Baron Geddon in this list, I believe. So uh, a solid pickup that would be from uh, from his perspective here. Really, really looking for anything at this point. Um, uh, shield Maiden, something uh, stat costed efficiently where he can hero power in the same turn really keep him out of keep himself out of combo range and uh yeah i don't think he has many worries at this point he can actually just start swinging to the face because he's got <laughs> enough damage in his hand Definitely. to just uh finish him off with just just the cards that he has you know despite does eight damage over two turns he's got six from the fire war axe and the bash man stan sipka's hero power is undoing uh, two swings from Doomhammer every turn. Yeah. That is, uh, that is something. Doomhammer was once a solid card in this matchup. Nowadays, yeah, it was definitely game deciding, for sure, back in the day. Nowadays, it's just a five mana card with two overload that negates just a card too hard. <laughs> Such a sad moment. Power, power level differences. Yeah. Yeah, no, no real, no real solution uh, being made apparent from Cipher. Uh, he does have to go ahead and Rockbiter to get this, get this Belcher off the table. Um, I like the decision to save the Hex. He's never going to combo yeah. kill him at this point. He knows that, um, and he is going to go ahead and Flame Tongue and kill off this, uh, this Sludge Belcher token. Yeah, but that means he is dead. Stan Sifka does have Despite plus Bash in his hand, and that means. Sansifka takes the series 3-1. to one. He joins Oskaka as the second player to move on from Group D, and unfortunately Cypher's tournament run has come to an end. Three losses with Shaman in this series alone. Yeah, I... <laughs> it's hard to, uh, it's hard to defend uh, that deck choice, but you have to admire the, uh, the attempted innovation uh, trying to bring a strategy back that mm -hmm. has long since been, uh, invalidated by most of the pro community uh, even though some people have had reasonable success with it and uh cypher obviously a, a very good player and you know wanted to wanted to take a shot and uh, it didn't pay off today stan sifka coming out on top um definitely a, a solid performance though yeah for sure and so with that that is the conclusion of the group stages and I'll go over a little bit of the players that uh, made it through each group from group a it was a uh, kalento and pavel making it through the playoff stage. In Group B, it was Nyria and RDU who made it through. Group C, which we casted last week, was Life Coach and Dog. That was a fun day of casting. And then today we saw Oskaka and Stan Sifka as the two players. So our eight players are set for the playoff stage. Uh, there isn't a date set yet for the playoffs, um, but if you want to find out more and stay updated, you can head over to hcl.gg. And uh, slash ENG on the end of that if you want the English version of the website. The playoffs, when they are scheduled, after we speak with the players about their availability, will be posted on that website as soon as possible. So make sure you're staying tuned there if you want more information. And uh, But, I mean, that's going to do it for us. Pearl Hype, once again, it was a pleasure casting with you. For the people that are watching, uh, where can they find you? And do you have any shout-outs or final words that you'd like to give? Uh, absolutely. Uh, big thanks uh, to Zumo Cutie. I, I really appreciate the uh, the opportunity to come on and cast, even though it was my only first and second time. But uh, I really appreciate it, and uh, yeah, hope I hope I did all right and made the fans happy. But uh, 
I, you can find me at, at fe underscore it's protohype on Twitter if you would like. Uh, I also stream pretty often uh, at twitch.tv slash protohype lol. And uh, you can find my team at followesports.com. Um, big shout outs to, to Marty, our owner. Uh, he's large in part a, uh, a defining a defining point for, for our success. And really appreciate him. And we appreciate all that Follow Esports does for our players and everyone in esports. Um, and uh, again, big thanks, big thanks, uh, TJ. And I hope to uh, I hope to cast with you again. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully, we can broadcast the playoffs once they're announced. Uh, but it it's been an awesome day. And again, guys, keep in mind if you want to uh, stay up to date and know exactly when the playoffs are going to take place. HCL. GG slash ENG. But once again, that's going to do it for myself and from 